Say it with us. Chicka chicka. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 fourth wall breaking characters. Yeah, and monkeys might fly out of my butt. Before we begin, we publish new videos every day, so be sure to subscribe for more great content. For this list, we're looking at those characters who didn't care that they were in a movie or television show. They'd still stop everything and give us a piece of their mind. Oh, don't get me wrong. Number 10, Jordan Belfort, The Wolf of Wall Street. I, I know you're not following what I'm saying anyway, right? That's, that's okay, that doesn't matter. Belfort was a stockbroker in the 1990s who pleaded guilty to fraud and crimes linked to stock market manipulation. Basically, he's the evil corporate villain you always see in those 80s movies, except he was a real person. My name is Jordan Belfort. Not him, me. The movie based on his book was well received and featured a number of fourth wall breaking moments. Was that yodeling I just heard or did you just say what I thought you said? The technique is used brilliantly to bring the audience closer to the character and also help them to understand the complicated details of his corrupt world. Since he isn't exactly an honest man though, Belfort often leaves us guessing what's real and what's a product of his drug fueled mind. Was all this legal? Absolutely f not. Number nine, Zach Morris, Saved by the Bell. Yeah, this is horrible. I just meant to get a car. If I don't find a way out of this, my life at Bayside is over. We can still hear the theme song in our heads every time we walk down a school hallway or read about Dustin Diamond's latest antics. The show featured some goofball acting and writing, but it remained a staple of the 90s. A large part of that was due to the character of Zach Morris. Gee, I wonder why they don't like him. Every so often, he'd pause the show and speak directly to the audience to make sure we understood what a predicament he was in that week, so that when he inevitably got out of it, we'd be all the more impressed. Why did I say that? <laughs> Number eight, Wayne Campbell, Wayne's World. My name is Wayne Campbell. I live in Aurora, Illinois. We're beginning to notice a distinct 90s flavor on this list. Was there something about that decade of grunge and high fashion that lent itself to fourth wall breaking characters? No, probably not. <laughs> Wayne Campbell is one of Mike Myers' earliest and funniest characters, stopping the movie for some hilariously obvious product placements and making constant inside and self-aware jokes to the camera. It might happen. He'd even stop the ending and redo the whole thing with a Scooby-Doo twist, followed by a mega happy final curtain. Yeah, but I think we should do the mega happy ending. Ah, oh, the mega happy ending, that's doable. Number seven, Malcolm, Malcolm in the Middle. My name is Malcolm. You wanna know what the best thing about childhood is? At some point it stops. Frankie Muniz played this too smart for his britches schoolboy perfectly. Malcolm would often stop the story in its tracks to speak directly to us, making sure we understood just how ridiculous his family was, or how absurd his situation was. When he sees my face, he's gonna know he doesn't have a chance! Our favorite scenes were when he thought he was being really smart, only to be thwarted by one of his brothers or his overbearing mother, making the troubles he'd have with his offbeat family all the more relatable. Granted, this isn't scientific. But the fact that Reese can't get brain freeze has to prove something. Number six, Bernie Mac, The Bernie Mac Show. I'm gonna kill one of them kids. Listen here, America, raising kids isn't easy. Raising someone else's kids is even worse, and no one had quite as hilarious a view on life as a parent as Bernie Mac. His seemingly mean attitude towards the kids was often juxtaposed hilariously against his obviously caring actions, making the show that much more endearing. If one of those kids cough and doesn't cover their mouth, I should have the right to pop them upside the head. We haven't even mentioned the funny rants and raves directed at us and America in general, which would so often have a great moral to them as well. Sometimes he just needed to get things off his chest, and we're here to listen. Had I spent another day with another minute, I probably would have, uh... Uncle Bernie, you hurt my feelings. Number five, Rob Gordon, High Fidelity. What came first, music or the misery? Do you like top 10 lists? Then you kind of have this guy to thank for them. Rob Gordon was a pioneer in the art of list making with his top fives in this early 2000s dramedy. Top five things I miss about Laura. One, sense of humor. The story revolves around the record store owner and him obsessively making top five lists. The movie even starts with him talking directly to us about his top five breakups. All time. Top five most memorable breakups. Other lists include top five dream jobs, top five things Rob misses about Laura, and top five songs about death. He was truly a list making legend and clearly never ran out of ideas. She does this thing in bed when she can't get to sleep. She kind of half moans and then rubs her feet together an equal number of times. It just kills me. Number four, Alvy Singer, Annie Hall. What do you do when you get stuck Four. on a movie line with a guy like this behind you? Woody Allen has made a career out of talking awkwardly to the camera. 
None of his characters so perfectly demonstrates his ability to have conversations with the audience like Alvy Singer from the Oscar-winning Annie Hall. You know, you, you know, you're always trying to get things to come out perfect in art because uh, it's real difficult in life. In fact, the movie opens up with Alvy speaking directly to the camera with a lengthy monologue. Boy, the food at this place is really terrible. The other one says, yeah, I know, and such small portions. It's the epitome of precious and witty writing, and it's a technique that Woody Allen would continue using. This character oozes humor and charm, especially when he's expressing his anxieties and insecurities to us. I can't believe this family. Number three, Frank Underwood, House of Cards. In Gaffney, we had our own brand of diplomacy. Up to this point, most of the characters and their on-camera monologues in this list have been on the humorous side, but this one starts to get a bit more serious. I have no patience for useless things. In the series premiere, Frank starts his dialogue with us as he's putting a dog out of its misery. For a moment, we can't tell if he's talking to the dog or us, or maybe we're the same thing to him. In other scenes, he gives us valuable, if cutthroat, lessons in ruthlessness. What's more, he also gives us a fascinating look behind the scenes of American politics. The office of pres- Yes, here we go again. Number two, Deadpool. Deadpool. Oh, hello. Strangely, there's nothing quite as satisfying as being lectured and quipped at while the merc with a mouth does some murdering. Let's count him down. Wade Wilson didn't start out as an iconic fourth wall breaking character, but in the comics, he slowly took on that role over time. He even jokes about looking like Ryan Reynolds at one point. That's an inside joke if we have ever heard one. Fourth wall break inside a fourth wall break. That's like 16 walls. Now that the infamous mutant has taken his talents to the big screen, we get to see him make a fool of the industry and even pay homage to other fourth wall breaking characters. You're still here. It's over. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. I mean, what do you think? You think they stand a chance? You're on their side, aren't you? Imagine that guy thinking he's Napoleon when I really am. A collateralized debt obligation. It's important to understand because it's what allowed a housing crisis to become a nationwide economic disaster. Number one, Ferris Bueller. Ferris Bueller's day off. You're still here? It's over. Are you still here? The list is over. Go home. Okay, not really. John Hughes was a legendary writer and director and one of the movies he's best known for is Ferris Bueller's Day Off, about a precocious teen who ditches school for possibly one of the greatest days ever. How could I possibly be expected to handle school on a day like this? Throughout the movie, Ferris gives us insights into his family life, his friends' problems, and his plans with his girlfriend Sloane. Ferris is a surprisingly unpessimistic kid, and that's why we like him. 20 bucks says he's sitting in his car debating about whether or not he should go out. <laughs> Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo and subscribe for new videos every day.